Why do we fear and worry? Why do we feel insecure looking for security despite having enough to live? So I think for most of us actually, in terms of security and worry, the answer is fairly obvious, if you don't mind me saying. We live in a world where things are constantly changing. And we have an understanding that our bodies, and I'm, when I say body, I include our mind in that, our body and mind are dependent on various things in the world in order to survive. So we need food, we need um, drink, we need shelter. And maybe we need some other things as well. But these are all dependent on acquiring certain things from the world around us and this world is in constant flux and the resources some of these resources at least are limited and this in creates a sense of worry and fear because we worry about the survival of the body and we worry about the body um, feeling pain and we worry about the mind feeling pain as well this is why we worry and even though we have enough how much is enough how much is enough if you've got millions and millions and millions of pounds of currency in your bank account then you might feel secure but most of us don't and maybe just around the corner there's a catastrophe waiting to happen because we live in this unstable world that's prone to change and that sense of instability and vulnerability is often heightened by a media that constantly projects these kinds of dangers onto us and makes us hyper aware and hyper vigilant perhaps of things that can go wrong so this is why we worry isn't it that's one of the reasons there's the worry about the physical being the physical organism and there's also a different kind of worry we have which is not just trying to protect the physical body and the physical organism but trying to protect our self-image or our self-concepts who we like to think that we are the self-concepts we have of ourselves and then the image that we project towards other people that we want other people to think of us maybe you want other people to think that we're clever or maybe you need other people to think that you're clever or maybe you even need yourself to feel that you're clever so you're, you're propping up your image not just to other people but to yourself and the example of being clever is just one example it could be it's whatever it is for you or whatever you've noticed in the people around you so we worry about people's opinions because it affects our self-image in their eyes and potentially our self-image in our eyes a lot of our self-esteem is derived from people's reactions to us so if you're a child and you're walking through life as a child and everyone's telling you how great you are chances are you'll think you're pretty great Whereas if you're a child and you're walking through life and everyone's telling you how you're not very great, then the chances are you'll adopt those beliefs and you'll think you're not very great. And you'll develop what we call low self-esteem or a negative self-concept. And that can cause a lot of worry and fear. There might be a fear deep down that somehow we're not worthy. Or maybe deep down we feel that there's a part of us that's spoiled, that's corrupt, that's beyond salvation, that's dirty. And there can, that can be a source of shame and embarrassment and guilt. So this, these can, this can form a different form of suffering, a much deeper, more pernicious form of suffering. 
and how these two things the the, the fear of physical survival um, or the fear of not surviving physically rather and the fear of the self-image and self-concept being damaged these projected psychological structures being damaged this gives rise to um, worry and fear and worry and fear are always about something in the future that you're worried that something's going to happen bad's going to happen in the future often based upon an experience of something bad have happened in the past so it's that memory of maybe something bad happening in the past projected onto the future so often if people have experienced profound poverty and physical hardship in their life in a way that's been very negative for them so they've not only experienced that poverty and hardship but they've experienced it in a very negative way then there'll be a fear of that going forwards and there'll be a huge desire for money and for physical security and similarly if you've um, been through some emotional or psychological trauma in the past then there'll naturally be a desire for psychological security and the way this plays out in our behavior or to put it in Eastern terms this is our karma the way our karma plays out this this chain of cause and effect that plays out in our body minds interacting with the world so even if it feels like you have enough to live coming back to your question Chanaga word even if it feels like you have enough there's a part of you that doesn't feel like you have enough there's a part of you perhaps that feels like you need more and that's why you worry now is there anything wrong with wanting the body to survive Is there anything wrong with wanting other people to think good of you? I would say there's nothing wrong with either of these things. There's nothing wrong with either of these things. But they go out of balance when we don't understand the essence of who we are, when we don't know who we are. These things become imbalanced and they cause problems and they cause suffering. Whereas when the self is realized then there's a fundamental security there and the security of the, the psychological security becomes of, of secondary importance in fact it becomes of no importance at all you just don't care about the psychological security at all 